Today in front of me I have two different grinders, on the left a DF64 and on the right a Barazza Forte. The DF is mine and the Forte was loaned to me by my friend Shay. Shay's got his own blog about coffee science so if you're into coffee science definitely check that out. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And the reason why these two grinders are interesting to me is that they represent a lower cost entry into unimodal style espresso. So unimodal style espresso is something that was popularized in the last decade or so. And the grinder that made it famous was the EK43. So later on in Scott Rao's blog, I saw that he was using a Forte brew grinder to get similar results that he would out of an EK43. And one thing that he said was that the Forte was easier to get aligned, grinding consistently than an EK43 was at that time. And since that post, there's been a lot of experimentation with aligning the Forte and the Vario such that you can get a near perfect alignment without shimming or any sort of thing. You just have to take it apart and align these components together. Inside this Forte, there's a set of ditting steel burrs that were designed for use with making drip and filter coffee. So Barazza themselves don't recommend using this particular grinder with the steel ditting burrs because it doesn't produce grinds that are consistent with how people normally brew espresso. So in traditional espresso, you wanna hit a one to two ratio in about 30 seconds at nine bar. And with this particular grinder, it's difficult to hit those specific parameters in that specific time. And to get that like unctuous sort of goopy espresso that people are familiar with. And likewise, on the left is kind of a, a newer comer to the game. So this is the DF64. And what really attracted me to this particular grinder was that it was essentially the cheapest grinder you could buy that could house 64 millimeter SSB multi-purpose burrs. And that is another brew focused burr that was actually modified to work better with this lighter style espresso. So before I bought the DF64, I was vacillating back and forth on whether I should buy a Vario, which is very similar to a Forte, except you know some of the inners are different, uh, but you can upgrade a Vario to have the same grinding uh, componentry as a Forte, and essentially that will give you the same exact grind quality that you could get on a Forte for a lot less. So all in, you could get a Vario refurbished from Brazza plus the metal grinding chamber and the steel burrs for I think four to $500, whereas the DF64 today is you might be able to get this DF64 itself for $400 and the burrs on top of that would be about another $200. So these two grinders or two grinders in these styles a Vario versus a DF64 end up being in a similar kind of price class and a Forte you could get for about $800. So these two grinders represent sort of the most cost efficient way to get into unimodal espresso. So just to get a better sense of how similar these two grinders and really the burrs inside these grinders are, I'm also going to pull a shot using this Easypresso Q2. So this Easypresso Q2 is another interesting grinder because it has burrs that are very similar to the, to the Commandante C40, which are really well regarded as a brew grinder. So all three of these grinders are really well regarded for creating filter coffee. But my question was, how good is the espresso from the DF relative to the Vario slash Forte? And how far is that from a hand grinder like the Easypresso Q2? All right, so before we get started, what I wanna do is make sure that all these grinders are purged. So I'll take five or six beans here. This is gonna be 0.5 to 0.6 grams and just run them through each grinder. And I'll just do this one off camera. All right, so I just wanna walk you guys through how each of these grinders is set up. The first one is the Easy Presso Q2. First thing you wanna do is to set it to zero. Basically tighten it. Uh, you'll notice that as you hold the Easy Presso with the handle parallel to the ground, it's not moving. So you just wanna go one click coarser or however many clicks that it takes for this handle to now drop. So this is what I call zero. Some people call this one. Um, so from here, I'm gonna count up 19 clicks for this particular bean at this particular uh, shot time that I've been aiming for and just click 19 times over There you go, that's it. Okay, so we can grind this now put the grinder upside down over the catch cup Invert it and your beans end up inside the Q2 screw the bottom cap on put the lid on and then get the grind in Okay So when you're done grinding you can feel it in the grinder give it a couple of taps um, Get any of these residual 
grinds in through the burrs. Unscrew your grinder, and then you've got your coffee in here. So I'm gonna prep this puck how I normally prep my pucks with the bottom paper filter. I'll just do this off camera really quick. So here we go. This was a one to 2.6. See this nice shot here. Put this aside and get to prepping the next puck. Okay, let's grind with the DF next. And I have here 16.2 grams of beans dosed out. Just gonna add a little water, shake it up. So it's important to do this RDT if you have a modified clump crusher, like I also have in here. It's basically a mythos style clump crusher, which uh, reduces the amount of retention you get behind the clump crusher. A very simple grinder to operate. Just put your beans in and hit go. So once your grinding is done, you want to hit the bellows a couple times. That'll get you out your last 0 0.2, 0 0.3 grams or so. The DF itself is a pretty low uh, retention grinder with the bellows and you know various modifications. It turns into a pretty uh, easy to use grinder. So I grind a little extra, so that's why there was some left. The Q2 actually did retain about 0.2 grams, but the DF seems to have exhausted it all. So we'll do a little puck prep here. You know, same puck prep as before. Perfect. Okay, so with the Vario um, and the Forte, they have a bit of an issue with what's called the floating zeros. From grind to grind, you can have your zero change. And for this Forte, I've been noticing that it's usually touching burrs at two macro, I micro. So let's try that. So I am hearing it just barely touch at I, and from here I'll count down seven clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And um, just like the DF, I'll use RDT. And we can grind. So with the Forte, you have grinds that actually settle at the bottom of the grind chamber. So it can be helpful to set the macro down to the maximum before you bellows. Now we're at 16.1-ish, hit stop. Uh, that's a little trick with the Forte and the Vario to get to the last bit of retention out if, and it will basically sweep the bottom of the chamber and help you get out the last of your grinds. Another puck to prep, so we'll just prep it the same way as the other two pucks. So the Vario, like the DF, has a little grounds left over. Looks like about 0.2, showing that this Forte with the right modifications as well can also be very low retention. Perfect, so. Third shot here with the Vario. Looks nice. So let's get set up and do a little tasting. So let's stir them all up, starting with the Q2, then the DF64 with SSP multi-purpose burrs, and then the Forte with brew burrs. And let's give them all a taste. Q2, DF, Forte. So today I'm drinking this coffee from Cosmic Dust. This is a coffee called Seri Sky, and this is a washed, Ethiopian from the Yerga Shefe region and the work of Sakaro uh, washing plant. This is an heirloom varietal. And heirlooms are really interesting, especially these Ethiopians. I'll do a video on different varietals of Arabica coffees and what they mean genetically, how to interpret the genetics of different varietals in the future. Okay, so I've been tasting these guys quite a bit in between each sip, taking a little sip of water just to cleanse the palate. So the most different, I think, obviously, is gonna be this Q2. And this Q2 has a more punchy acidity. It tastes, uh, has a little bit more stringency, a little tiny bit more bitterness, not quite as smooth as these other two. So it tastes like, you know, potentially a little bit less even, right? You can't expect to have SSP or dating level grind quality from a hand grinder that costs less than the, you know, the SSP multi-purpose purse. But this shot is still really quite good, especially for a light roast pulled to this ratio in this style. Today in the cup between these two, the SSP multi-purpose burrs were a little bit smoother. It has a very smooth start. The acidity is not quite as punchy in your face. It's got more, I think, lingering sweetness and a really pronounced floral finish. You can really taste the florals coming out of this coffee. It's hard to spot any kind of major defects, at least relative to these other cups. The Forte is much closer to the SSP multi-purpose burrs than the Q2. Between these two, the Forte might be ever so slightly harsher acidity, slightly more drying astringency. That level of difference could very well have been 
the small differences in grind size between the two grinders. It could have been a difference in puck prep. That's the thing uh, that makes comparing equipment so, so difficult. Small changes can result in like, you know, relatively large changes in a cup, and it can be very difficult to align two grinders to the same exact parameters so that you can taste them side by side. So uh, I think anytime you see a gear review saying that I've tried this for a week and it's better than that grinder, I don't always think that's such a fair comparison to make because once you dial in any grinder, your maximum, your optimal shot that you can pull, it's, it's gonna be hard to replicate that uh, across grinders, especially in a side-by-side -side comparison like this. So in terms of cup quality, they're very, very similar. Today I'm preferring this shot from the SSP Multipurpose Burst, but it doesn't mean that I couldn't dial a shot in with the Forte to be as good as, uh, as this one. I think honestly in a triangle test out of a lot of difficulty pulling these two apart, honestly I could pull this apart fairly easily. This one taste wise is a lot more different from these two. So after trying these three grinders side by side, I have to say that the Forte and the DF64, or more specifically the Didding Steel Brew Burrs and the SSP Multipurpose Burrs are very similar in espresso space, in, in taste space. So I think when it comes to picking between the DF and the Forte, it really comes down to what some of your considerations are. As far as the lowest absolute entry into Unimodal's flat burr space would be a Vario, not a Forte, where you could swap out the componentry inside the Vario to match the Forte's componentry. If you can afford to spend a little bit more money, I do like the DS64. I like how the grind adjustment is continuous. I like how you have some of these modifications built in. And both of these you can modify. You can see here that this is not a stock Bratza hopper. This is a single dosing hopper made by Shea. Uh, it's got a little bellows that you can print out a TPU. Uh, whereas the DS64 has, has more mods on it. It's got this riser catch cup. It's got a tilted base. It's got this uh, zero uh, indicator, dial indicator, as well as an anti-popcorning addition onto the bellows. And, and this Vario also has an anti-popcorn uh, attachment here that keeps the beans from popping out. So both of these can be modified and upgraded to work better with a single dose workflow. And that's nice if you're changing beans frequently. In terms of build quality, you know, they're both pretty nice. The Forte I like has this uh, integrated scale. Uh, you can get the Vario with the integrated scale, but you can also offer the Vario that doesn't have the integrated scale, and that'll be a little bit cheaper. So I'm not gonna make any definitive conclusions to say that the DS64 with SSP multipurpose burrs is better than the Forte, because a lot of that's actually gonna depend on your particular gear, how well your Forte is aligned, whether you've aligned it well. Same with the DS64, how well is your DF aligned? Those things are gonna play a pretty big role in the quality of your coffee. So both of these grinders were aligned. I trust that Shea was able to grind, align this Forte very well. And I'll leave a link to the Alicorn alignment process for Varios and Fortes in the description. And this DS64 I aligned personally and you know, I have a really good wipe there. So I think out of box with either of these two grinders, if you didn't perform this alignment, you couldn't expect to get the same level of results. So both of these grinders, you have to put some work into you know, in order for them to perform at their peak. This is not a class of grinders where you can buy and expect to have you know, really well aligned burrs. So if you want a grinder like that, where you can buy it and, and know that everything is well aligned, you're looking at spending upwards of $2,000 or more. Probably the, the cheapest grinder in the, that can do that is the Lago MP64, which is housing the same burrs as this DF64. And then, you know, they go up to the P100, the Monolith Max, um, EK43. And EK probably is not gonna come as well aligned as some of those other uh, Titan grinders that you can buy. So actually over the weekend I tried a P100 and we compared it against this DF64 and the espresso coming out of the P100 I have to say was incredible. It was, it was really really good but I didn't think that coffee that the P100 made was out of the range of possibility for this DF64. Really what the difference was with the P100 and this DF64 was the build quality. Those Titan class grinders are just built so well. The tolerances are minuscule it comes really well aligned. There's nothing you have to do to the grinder and it just grinds super, super fast. It tastes great. But likewise, I actually pulled a shot with that P100 that wasn't so great. Just because you buy the best gear doesn't mean you'll make the best coffee. A lot of it comes down to your skill and experience. And if you learn to taste and you learn to dial it, you can use either of these grinders, a little bit of tinkering, and make espresso that's of incredible quality. What was actually really surprising to me was the quality of espresso coming from this Easy Presso Q2. I wasn't expecting it to be as clear as it was. You know, if you're trying to get into something similar to a unimodal style espresso without spending 
$500 on a Vario or $600 plus dollars on a DF64 or $800 on a Forte, spending $120 bucks on this Easy Presto Q2 could be a good introduction for you. And this is just a great grinder, I think, to own, period. So thanks for watching. I'll be back with some more espresso-focused content in the future.